alternative dig talk real issues real talk people you're welcome to the snap talk with your girl teddy tenjo every saturday right from six to seven it is your responsibility Thank you alternative dig talk mukwano gwa gwali to be kichi wandi agadde to ogireko is it about family you can take your time look for a job stabilize men will come men will always be there you will get the men bonda gwa yagalo msaje nina gwa yagalo jamu funa mbaka ntendo ku mbaka ke tuke bina bitu ya senga na ojaba ne ngo ri asitu detu yake de kumacha baga anti situ detu ne nga mbutu fwa garment ya chali chali muto is it outside family is it society oh could it be relationships just be commenting a topic ina janja gadde to ogireko tujja ko tujogera the alternative dig talk we share a nganzi the snap talk Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Digital. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on Alternative Digital. Digital, the way to go. Get up pretty early to go do something. We are the alternative dig talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show, The Mighty Drive, informative and entertainment show, exclusive and live interviews. We President Museveni was the Jews in the middle of the Kaunga Kiro Bili. That's what I call it. You know what I call it? We are not going to be able to do it. Jagara Kueva is the alternative digital. It was the Kanoka Mighty Drive. 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 All given to you, just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Alternative digital. We always have to put 
technologies, especially when it comes to mobile and improvised way of communication. But most people that think we do our best to change the content that is online. Um, there are those young people that are uh, considered abusing digital uh, platforms. But for us, we come here as part of digital to ensure that we change the content of um, digital communication. We are glad and so humbled every when we have Professor Pedro Olumumba. Every when we have Professor Pedro Olumumba, it's one of those best moments in Uganda, Africa, and the entire continent to ever get. Prof, you are in Uganda. Since the number they are watching us, we should say hello to the viewers of Uganda Digital. Digital, digital, so it's one of the digital. Perhaps it should be complementary rather than alternative. And I'm glad, as I've always said, to be in Uganda, which is a great country in the continent of Africa. Benefit from the Kashima. He went into the mining sector, sector and said that those who are engaged in mining and are not been paying taxes must be dealt with and they paid back taxes. He went into the monetary sector and demanded that the forex bureaus be closed because those were conduits for taking money outside of the country. He went into the contracts and favorable contracts by different countries, different countries and he revoked some of them. And these things annoy people who, whose agenda was to be parasitic upon the resources of the people of the United Republic of Tanzania. And the truth be told, this individual called John Pombe Magufuli is not somebody who emerged out of nowhere. He emerged out of a mature political system which is Chama Chama Pinduzi. And therefore we must not be, find ourselves in the danger of individualizing the successes that have been made. He has now been succeeded by Mama Samia Suluhu Hassan. And I have no doubt, because CCM is a party with a, a philosophy, with an ideology, the styles may be different, but the things that are in the best interest of the people of Tanzania will continue, even under the administration of Mama Samia Suluhu Hassan. Ah, discussing African politics comes hard, but sometimes you have to also push it on, especially when you have icons like Pierre or Mumba, who is more experienced than... Uh, and of course, the second limb of your question is comparison. I, yeah, I do yeah. not know why we want to compare. Because <laughs> there, there are differences and nuances in every country. Mm. And, and you, you go to each country, it has its own peculiarities and its own history. Mm. And sometimes history de de informs the method of governance. Mm. Uganda has her own, her own history. And her governance is, to a certain extent, informed by that history. Rwanda has a history. Burundi has a history. South Sudan has a history. Tanzania has a history. Uh, uh, Kenya has a history. Ghana has a history. So th this kind of, there is what I call uh, intellectual adolescence that you see in, in some of the analysis. And it's Albert Einstein who, who once said, Condemnation without investigation is the worst form of ignorance. People who have no idea, no information, and they are very quick to criticize, very quick to, to draw conclusions. And if you ask them these things that you are talking about, can you now go a, an inch deeper? Then they begin to insult you because they can't engage in a healthy debate which is undergirded by facts. It is true that not a single human being can govern guiltlessly. You are going to make mistakes. And it's the duty of the opposition in civilized democracies. The duty of the opposition is to correct these mistakes because the country is one. Whether you are in opposition or in government, the roads are the same that you travel on, the medical facilities and all these things. That's a good one. Um, well, still with Professor Pedro Olumumba, I will repeat, and you will forgive me for over-repeating, to me as an individual and on behalf of the alternative as a movement and also the alternative of digital, it inspires many. And uh, I do not know, maybe this could be a personal question, that the, his parents were so blessed, also named him before, <laughs> before Patrice Lumumba of, um, of Congo at the time. I do not even know how they got the wisdom 
to name you before an African icon then and by God's grace you have also become one. That's I think it's a, it's a, it's a blessing. I want to go back to your response, especially mm. when you talked of Western influence, agents of the West. That has been a talk for so many leaders in Africa here. Every when young people come on board to demand and ask tough questions, Mr. Museven here would say, those are being sponsored by the West. <laughs> Every when you put up your hand and say, Mr. President, there is a corrupt person like, I can assure you, the West will not destabilize my country. You have again mentioned the same. It's not, not becoming a problem not with, with our elders. I, 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 when, no. we when, I said, when I said to Mr. Magufuli, your former friend, uh, definitely, uh, uh, rest in peace, that some say he was a dictator, he said, those who say he was a dictator, they must be agents of the West. Not necessarily. I, I should so, not be understood in yeah. that narrow sense. I respect President Ma Pre Pre President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, mm. whom I've had the advantage of meeting at different fora. Yeah. But it is not always the case <laughs> that everybody who raises a legitimate issue yeah. is an agent of the West. They are well-meaning Africans, they are well-meaning Ugandans, who are raising legitimate issues. And when people raise legitimate issues, my own view is not to dismiss them. When you hear me saying that some of these individuals are agents of the West, I know, particularly the ones that I'm talking about as regards Tanzania, I'm saying so because of the evidence that I have, because of the facts that I have. But the truth be told, it is not true that every person who raises a legitimate an issue agency. is an agent of anybody. They are agents for themselves and they are agents of their countries and they feel for their country. I've listened to the opposition in Uganda and sometimes they raise very legitimate issues. Issues which must not be ignored by any administration. So let us not be understood to mean or to say <laughs> that everybody who asks a tough question is an agent of the West. He's simply a person who may be animated by the same love of the country as those in government have for the country. And they deserve an opportunity to be heard. But there is one thing. It is important to couch how you say things. When you say things, you must do it with the firmness that opens the eyes of your opponent, not with the arrogance that inflames their anger. It is important that you do that. Strategy is critical, particularly in African countries. Because African leaders tend to be very thin-skinned thin and hypersensitive. And sometimes you may lose the argument simply because you use the wrong approach. I wanted to ask you about the... Because you said sometimes the biggest challenge is the African leaders. But also to ask for how long would the greed amongst African leaders stay. I want to give you an example. When when Sankara came on board, he had a very brilliant program for Burkina Faso. And we see him being betrayed by his own. What do you think is the problem? Do we assume that those people with a good agenda don't convince their closest people to believe in the agenda and work together? You know, it is Kwame Nkrumah who said that imperialism never rests and it continues to wear to wear different masks and when they want to recruit they recruit within your ranks so what they do is that they recruit within their ranks if you allow me to refer you to the bible when they wanted jesus to be betrayed they did not go outside they found an insider and throughout history it is insiders who are used to betray the cause. So it's not something that is recent. The most important thing is that we must be eternally vigilant to ensure that those who mean well for us are protected by individuals who share the same ideology. The problem is that sometimes you may think that people are moving in the di same direction as you are but they have been recruited by those agents of neo-colonialism. And it is necessary that they are identified early, and if they are identified early, that they are rooted so that the grand agenda 
is not torpedoed. Easier said than done. Yeah. That is why you require eternal vigilance. When it comes to the moral question, do you think the clergy have done enough to upbring, to mentor and shape and irrigate leaders from the grassroots? Because we, as we grow, even now parents buy some stuff for their kids to campaign and become leaders in school. Do you think the clergy have done enough? The clergy are not the from heaven. The, Tutu, do no. they still exist? <laughs> the clergy are not from heaven. The clergy are from amongst us. The clergy are not immune from the problems that we have. The clergy have their own failings. And as history has demonstrated, there are times when the clergy or individuals within the clergy, whether they are of the Muslim faith or the Christian faith or the Hindu faith, there may emerge from within their ranks individuals who are capable of articulating agenda in the interest of the people. But they are few and far between. In South Africa, we saw the activities of people like Desmond Pilo Tutu. We saw the activities of people like Alan Bushak. In Kenya, we saw the people uh, the, in Uganda, the Shukurum. Bishop Cardinal Lujanani Luwum. And we saw uh, in Kenya, Alexander Kipsang Muke and uh, Ndingi Mwana Anzeki. And, and we have seen that throughout the ages. They are few and far between. But to rely on the clergy as the people who will save us is to look for a snowball in hell. We are still on the Mighty Dive Show with Professor Pelo Olumumba. And um, don't mind the tilting. These are our roads alone. <laughs> but he said that even in his country, they aren't too much better than this. But maybe we have to prepare and contrast. <laughs> Prof, your speeches motivate especially young people and our generation because there is a certain generation of the likes of Malema and others whom some people think they are too, they seem to be radical. What's your take on that? That the likes of Malema, once they, they get power, they are likely to be so, so radical. And perhaps that's why, for some reason, there are some, uh, there are some reserved people who say, okay, we have reservations here, Malema could have wonderful um, ideas but the way he even expresses himself some people have even said Bobby Wine in our country that he's radical he's hard I mean what do you think oh it, all this? it is the duty of every patriot to be a radical it is, the, that it is the patriotic duty of every citizen to be a radical in order to change our agriculture we must be radicals in order to change our education we must be radicals in order to change our sectors, our health system, our education system, we must be radicals. But our radicalism must be canalized. It must be directed. It must be the radicalism that is designed to achieve a purpose. So I have no quarrel with radicals. I love them. The only thing that I want is that we must tame our radicals and our radicalism so that he is directed towards a particular target. Is it the same radicalism that is likely to chase away people who would have, an, I mean, some interest in supporting someone and they, and they, because I want to give you an example here. Only years ago when President BCJ, uh, Mr. B, uh, Dr. BCJ was protesting, you would find old women and men say, we would support him, but the man looks angry by how he communicates. Does it, this radicalism push away some people of good intention? Not, not necessarily. And, and I, I think we must not confuse an individual's anger as uh, the thing that should drive us away. There may be reason why people are angry, reasons that we do not know. But if a person is a part of a system and a part of a process, that particular process will also shape uh, the things that he or she does. And that is why the political party sometimes or organizations have a culture and a philosophy and an ideology. And once you have that, you may have extreme ideas, but those will be moderated. And let us not confuse demagogues and recklessness for radicalism. Yeah. When one is a demagogue, he is not necessarily a radical. You can be a radical in your silence, in the things that you do. It is the great Wale Shoinka who once said that a tiger does not shout about his tigritude. 
you follow the path of a tiger and you see a skeleton of an antelope and you know that some tigritude has emanated from there. So let us not uh, understand these words without understanding the context in which they are used. Okay. Someone asked, uh, someone told us, ask you this question. When the had would have you mm. about the education system, if you were in a new position to shape the education system in Africa, how would you see this education system? In answering your question, uh, permit me to refer you to a book that was written in 1933 by an African-American called Carter G. Woodson, Miseducation of the Negro. And in one of the chapters he says that the education that we inherited from the white man teaches the African to love the Jew, to love the English, to love the Portuguese, to love the French, to love the Russian, to love the Arab, and to hate himself. One of the things we must do about our education is to ensure that we tailor it in a manner that will make us have self-esteem, that will equip us with the skills which are designed and directed to change the quality of our lives. And I think the time has come that as Africans we must ask ourselves what quality of education are we deploying to our young men and women. How is it that having regained independence we have produced engineers over the years but when the chips are down is the Chinese that we bring here. How is it that we have produced doctors over the years but when our leaders particularly of the political class are sick what they do is to run out to other countries. How is it that we have produced graduates in agriculture but when the chips are down, we get the Israelis to do it for us. In other words, we have low self-esteem. And I, right now, of course, we have the COVID and not a single African country has produced a vaccine. We are running to Europe and America or to China or Russia to get the vaccines. And we are happily, our ministers for health and our presidents in some countries are trooping to be injected with vaccines which are made by other civilization. Our education must be founded on equipping people with skills. Our governments must invest in research and development because it is in research and development that we develop technologies which when deployed changes the quality of the people's lives. And that requires some harmonization. Within the East African community, I would have thought that Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and of course South Sudan would begin to harmonize the education system, the same in ECOWAS, the same in SADAC, the same in Central Africa, the same in the Horn, the same in the Maghreb, and ultimately we have a system which is harmonized so that if a young man or a woman was going to school in Fura Bay in Freetown, and he or she wanted to transfer to a university in Djibouti, he or she would do so smoothly. But as it is, we are still wedded to the prescriptions that were given to us by our erstwhile colonizers and now our neo-colonizers. We are with the Prof. Pierre on Mumba. Um, on the road, because our show is in a van. And I am sure, as they follow tonight, that he hasn't had any interview in the van. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what we call alternative digital. We always want to provide alternatives that simply are crying, and um, we are crying around. So we always want to provide alternatives, especially when it comes to digital platforms, and of course changing the content on our digital um, online platforms. You talked of East African community and the rest, and my interest now comes to you, uh, Prof. To ask. Mm. Every country now is battling with its problems internally. Uganda will have our own problems. I am sure Kenya, you will have your own problems, and so is TZ and Rwanda, Burundi and, uh, and uh, South Sudan. Do you think this is the right time for East African community to continue being strong, especially when each one of the country has concerns? But would rather be that every country sorts themselves internally and then we are like, okay, I think we're now good to go to have East African community and then we continue having all these blocks, I mean, after a certain period of time, than simply rushing. Because you see, for example, in Uganda, our constitution is so different from yours. 
so different from Kenya. We have we have no term limit here. Kenya does. We have no age limit here. So isn't that confusion? Having such a <laughs> cocktail, Uganda then Kenya has its own way. Rwanda has a, a seven year um, uh, term limit. Uganda has no limit. Kenya has something different. And then we have you. Do you think this or two, it's better for every country to sort themselves? And then when we have matured, we come on board. And you know, uh, uh, this idea that when we have matured <laughs> assumes that we are babies uh, <laughs> waiting to mature. My own view is this each society, each family in a country, each family in a village each village in a county, each county in a country, will always have their peculiarities. And in my view, that does not stand in the way of identify things, identify, identify things that are of common interest. And that is how I understand the East African community and the treaty of the East African community, which says that we shall move in stages. We first start with a common market, yeah. Then we go into a customs union yeah. and ultimately a political federation. Yeah. Because we trade right now, yeah. we trade. We, we Ugandans you trading with trade, Kenyans and, 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 and Rwanda and all these things. So let us not confuse this narrow political interest which are, are magnified by the political class for purposes of retaining power and enjoying largesse as standing in the way of East African integration. I believe that we have a duty to integrate. I believe that we should move in the stepped and state manner that we said. We have a common market, a common, uh, a, a common uh, tax regime, ultimately a common currency, and ultimately a political uh, federation. And all these things are intergenerational. Let us not assume that they must be done in our lifetimes. Some of these things will be achieved and will be achieved long after we are gone. Look at the European Union which started as uh, the Steel and Iron Union in 1950s. It took many years but even now we have seen the British running out of it. So there is, there is never a perfect time, there is never a perfect union but nobody can quarrel with the fact that when we had the East African Airways it was better when we had the East African power and lighting, perhaps we were better. When we had the East African post and telecommunication, we were better. When we had people moving around the country, the East African University, there were things that were better. We were better integrated when people went to Makerere University, University of Dar es Salaam, and University of Nairobi. And there is a sense in which we are nostalgic of those days, but we must for, for, for those days. And we must work at it. If we want to find problems and reasons not to federate, there is no shortage of them. But we must not be a people who for every solution we look for a problem. We ought to proceed on the premise that we are one people with our idiosyncrasies, which must be de-emphasized for the general good. Prof, our viewers, our viewers we want to hear from you. Your language, yes. you are more or less a messenger of Nkrumah. Yes. Why wasn't Nkrumah understood? And so was Gaddafi. In the same line. And when you hear Mr. Seven also, Pan-Africanism, that is one of his... I mean, I think everyone he wakes up, Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism. Why do you think your... your I mean, Lumum, uh, sorry, Nkrumah wasn't understood, and most likely Gaddafi wasn't understood, and most likely also the present ones aren't being understood. <laughs> Everywhere one who mentions about it, they're like, Nkrumah wants to govern all of us. Why? I mean, Mkrumah seven also wants to take the whole of Africa. Why are these people who promote Pan-Africanism understood? You know, allow me to say this, and we are not comparing these individuals. <laughs> Jesus Christ was not understood, and they crucified him. Yeah. Muhammad was not understood, and he was poisoned. The Lord Krishna was not understood. Buddha was not understood. God was not understood. Now God himself. So <laughs> we will always be misunderstood. We lesser mortals will be misunderstood. 
even when you have a perfect message and there is no perfect message even when you have a good message there will always be elements within the society who will fight against that message but the beauty of Africa now is that I'm beginning to see a groundswell where a critical mass is beginning to emerge young Africans who are saying we must tear down the borders let us move across Africa let us not have passports let's have a common passport let us not have visas let us have free movement let us not have many currencies we should have a single currency and I believe that that is happening because people have recognized that when we are divided and disunited then it is easier to conquer and to manipulate us and those who are agents of this kind of change will have no shortage of enemies both within and without who believe that if Africa is united if East Africa is united then their economic and political fortunes will go down and it's our duty to ensure that we guard ourselves against such individuals and work in such a manner as to ensure that the grand agenda of liberating our people from poverty, sorrow and want is given traction so that our ultimate goal of creating good quality life for people is realized. It's Martin Luther King Jr. who said that even when clergymen said that there'll be a new Jerusalem where the people will be drinking milk and honey, before we go there, we want milk and honey. Before we go to heaven, we want milk and honey here. And that is what governments are for, to give us milk and honey as we prepare for the eternal milk and honey. Prof, I can't thank you now for being with us, but I also have to ask you, we have anglophones, we have heard of you know, those ideologies getting stuck into people's minds. So how possible is this unity, especially when our brains have been compromised to believe if I am an angry phone, I must behave like a French, I must be this. I mean, is that possible? Uh, Ngugi Wath Yongo, my countryman, is very clear in saying this. The first thing is to decolonize our minds. Mm. All battles that have liberated humanity have always been fought in two places, in the mind and in the heart. Once you exercise the ghosts of inferiority complex, the ghosts of low self-esteem, which are resident in our minds and hearts, you will be amazed at what will happen. And we have in the history of Africa seen people who have succeeded in exercising those ghosts. It is our duty to play our part in achieving that grand agenda to exercise those ghosts and it's through decolonization of the mind you say anglophone africa if you go into those countries how many people speak english you go to francophone africa lusophone africa some even say arabophone africa those are colonial relics which are used by the erstwhile colonizer and the current neo-colonizer to confuse us and to run away from our true moral and intellectual north which is self-esteem uh, prof um, because you are an african icon one also would want to know there are some people who think that most likely africans weren't ready or even prepared to get independence what's your take because some people think we have mismanaged the country look at how congo was uh you, yeah, i mean the person who was named uh whom you were named after whom every when i watch the documentary with how he was assassinated and that's patrice lumumba and you would see how um uh, you would see how mobutu would brag and say this is an agent of the west i have come to bring this fundamental change and the rest I mean, were we prepared and ready for independence? Look at it, I mean, Uganda, so many countries. No, 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 that is an unfair question. First, there is not a people anywhere that I know that is never ready to enjoy their freedom. And 
there is this argument that we were granted independence. We regained our independence. These individuals came here, they used superior weaponry, and they magnified our ethnic differences. They divided us and conquered us. First of all, they came and enslaved us. After they had stopped enslaving us, they colonized us. After they stopped colonizing us, they still want to govern us uh, through the neo-colonial project. The fact that we have problems with the post-colonial state does not mean that we are not ready to govern ourselves. Look at Europe itself. In the United Kingdom, they fought wars for hundreds of years. It is this same Europeans who between 1914 and 1918 were slaughtering each other in what they called world wars. Between 1939 and 1945, they were slaughtering each other. In the United Kingdom, there is the unsettled question of Northern Ireland. In Eastern Europe, they have problems. So when they talk about these things, they make us believe that they are immune from these problems. We know uh, there was the civil war in Spain. We know the coup d'etat that were taking place in Portugal. We know that Germany was divided until the latter part of the 20th century. We know the Soviet Union only split in the 1990s. We know that in Asia there are wars in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. We know the Kashmiri problem in India. We know the problems in Bangladesh. We know the Korean War of 1953. We know the coup d'etats in Brazil, in Chile, in Argentina, in Peru, in Nicaragua, in Honduras. We know all these things. So nobody should ever cheat you that it is only in Africa where there are problems. They use their media to pretend that it's only in Africa, but there is problems. Whenever, and whenever and wherever there are human beings, there will always be problems. And it's our duty to resolve those problems. And indeed, when the chips are down, it may very well be the case that Africans have resolved their problems a little better than the Europeans have over the years. I want to use this simile, Prof. Mm. Because you're a parent. You wake up in the morning, you have a very wonderful V8. And you'd want your son to learn to drive. Because he's been learning from you simply by sitting in front and being your co-driver. And so it was with the colonialists vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the African chiefs that they used uh, to work with. And by because of force, your son is becoming so radical and says, Dad, I want also to try this. So out of either anger or force, you just say, OK, there it is, and you look on. Is it the same simile that would apply when it comes to colonialists and then to African leaders. Okay, you're pushing us away, there you are. And then you see your son crashing and knocking him there. Does that go back to the preparedness? Let, let's uh, talk about it. We regained our independence. Yeah. And each country that regained their independence have had unique experiences. Mm -hmm. It is not as if the entire African continent has been in this mark and mire of confusion. Mm -hmm. There are examples in African countries which have done well. They have uh, had their problems, but they are surviving and the countries are thriving. One of the most important things, therefore, that we must do because we have this awareness is to ensure that we make leadership an apprenticeship so that one is not a leader until your successor succeeds. This is what Mwalimu Nyerere used to say. Wewe si kiongozi, mpaka alie kurithi amefaulu. In other words, you've got to have a system that produces leaders who are servants. It is the duty of a leader to produce leaders who surpass him or her. That is why the Africans say that when mother cow is chewing curd, baby cow looks at how she is doing it and learns from it. And perhaps leaders have had their failings, but we are saying it is a, the duty of a leader to mentor younger people so that the art of leadership is passed from generation to generation. Leadership is intergenerational. One leader passes the baton 
to the other and those who are the holders of the baton recede into the rear and now are able to say by dint of experience don't fall into the hole that we fell don't step on the landmines that we stepped on avoid the mistakes that we make and in that way the leader that succeeds you is better than you in terms of execution and lo and behold like those who race in a relay race all celebrate the one who started the one who was in the middle and the one who finishes because the race is won and what is the race about improving the quality of the people's lives in all its dimensions that is what leadership is all about let us not sometimes moralize too much about leadership philosophize too much about leadership intellectualize too much about leadership when the chips are down young people out of school either want job opportunities or opportunities to innovate and invent people want to eat food have good agriculture they want good schools have good schools they want to engage in research give money for research and development when they are sick they want good hospitals when they want to move they want to move on good roads if you ensure that that happens let me tell you many people will not worry who is the president who is the minister and you can see that in the scandinavian countries where leadership is about service no that's been an old mumba mm. for us as africans and it's always it will always be a pleasure having him with us every winter and um, he's not too far i mean because he's one, uh, i mean he's just closer here in, in, in kenya so yeah we take pride in him thank you Prof, is there a good will because you said it's the responsibility of leaders to ensure they have successors and the rest is there a will in african leaders by the way so and why is it there that way? Let, let me tell you, sometimes we, 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 we are rather simplistic in dealing with Africa. And, and Nyerere said it in Ghana in, in the month of March in 1997, that when he travels outside of the country, they ask him, how is Africa? <laughs> Africa is divided into 55 countries. And he said, when the Europeans come, and a leader comes from a little country called uh, Portugal. Mm. An African leader does not ask him what is happening in Austria. <laughs> but yes, so let us be very careful when we ask, uh, when we talk about Africa in that general sense. Africa as it is, is divided into 54 countries, each with its unique character and jurisdiction. So flying from Dhaka in Senegal to Djibouti is nine hours. It's the same distance as fly, flying from Nairobi to Rome. And therefore, let us be very careful when we ask that question because there, is, there cannot be a simple, straightforward answer to it. Each country is unique. Each country has its own problems. Each country has addressed those problems differently. And when we talk about African unity, we are simply saying that in the grand scheme of things, we should emphasize the things that unite us and de-emphasize the things that divide us. And that does not mean that there will be peculiarities in each country. Even when we talk about African unity, we will, for example, have to accommodate traditional chieftaincies which are found in Uganda, which are found in Malawi, which are found in South Africa, which are found in Nigeria, which are found in Ghana. And we must create a structure that respects all these in a manner that will fulfill the ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal, as I've said, and I repeat almost ad nauseum, is to create an environment where citizens thrive and have good quality of life, physically, emotionally, economically, and totally. Uh, Prof, on behalf of our viewers and young people, I, I, you will forgive me for overemphasizing young people yes. because like I said you are an icon to young people because this generation sorry this world belongs to young people than the old I mean that is factual because of uh, I mean because of nature the, the, the law of nature there is what they call intellectual dishonesty and it's been trending it's one of the latest phrases being used but electors like you and others have over lamented why, and some people have also gone ahead to ask, 
why haven't you offered yourselves to contest? Some people think leadership is about also contesting for a bigger political office, like for presidency, and then you have all those ideas being imp implemented because you have the budget, than writing wonderful uh, books, giving wonderful speeches, and then ask, where is the prof on our ballot paper? What do you have to you say? Know, that, that, that is the mistake, and that is why you have conflicts in Africa. Everybody thinks that everybody must be a politician. We have how many 40 million Ugandans? How many seats are to be contested for? <laughs> for they are not more than 4,000. Yeah. We must each play our role. Some of the greatest leaders that we respect never occupied any public office. Yeah. Which office did Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. occupy in the United yeah. States? He was a moral leader. Yeah. Which office did Mahatma Gandhi occupy in India? He was a moral leader. It is our duty to contribute in different sectors, wherever we are. We contribute. If you are a broadcaster, you make a contribution in that sector. If you are an academic, you make a, a contribution in that sector. And as long as we are able to appreciate that, that we are all laborers in this, on the same firm and each has a different role to play, then we will not have this appetite to occupy political office. Speaking for myself, I've contested and I've written a book about it. Speaking for myself, I am part of a foundation which is present in 38 African countries, yeah. working with young people they to do they things. They so, so there is a sense in which those who are quick and, and, and the, 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 the digital space has become a very useful space. But it is also a producer of individuals who shoot from the hip, who condemn without investigation, who are quick to judge who are quick to insult. And if you ask them the second level question, they have no answers. I personally am very slow. And I would tell young people two things. First of all, youth is not a permanent stage. Yeah. You are youth today. In a few years, you are not youth. You are amongst the old people. So prepare when you are youth, prepare for your old age. Yeah. Youth is not a permanent stage like being a man or being a woman. Forever yes, <laughs> that you'll forever be. So let us know when we are youth that we are simply creating an environment for successor generations and also remember that your duty is to play your part wherever you are. It is once again Martin Luther King Jr. who said, if it falls upon your lap to be a street sweeper, sweep the streets like nobody ever swept the streets. If you are a toilet cleaner, Clean the streets like nobody ever cleaned uh, the, the toilet. If you are bush, he said, be a good bush. If you are a tree, be a good tree. If you are a bubble in the ocean of humanity, be a good bubble. If you are anything, be good at that thing. Don't cry for things that you don't have. As Chinua Achebe once said, on the giant Iroko tree, let the ego patch, let the hawk patch. Let the dove patch. Let everybody patch. That's Pierre Old Mumba for you and for all of us. Um, my name is Norman Kimbise. I am with Professor Pierre Old Mumba. That biggest icon. Some people have come. Remember, to we have another interview, so yeah, true. you should so, not exhaust <laughs> your source. <laughs> <laughs> we are with Pierre Old Mumba. We have him. We are glad to have him. And. Um, just in a, in a few uh, coming minutes to close um, for our viewers, at a, on a scale of 10, how would you rate the West contribution when it comes to the conflicts in Africa? Eight, plus eight out of ten. The West, Western countries manipulate conflict in Africa. Because if you look at Western countries, the arms industry is one of the largest foreign exchange earners. Even for countries that look very innocent like Sweden, if you look at their GDP and the contribution of arms, where do they sell those arms? In Africa, amongst other places. So is it in their best interest that we don't have conflicts? Where will they sell their bullets? Where will they sell their tanks? Where will they sell their grenades? They contribute and manipulate and promote conflict because the arms industry is a multi-million dollar industry. But we are also to blame. Why do we agree to be manipulated? 
Why do we agree to be drawn in conflicts which undermine our very being? But eight out of ten, most of these conflicts have the invisible but not so invisible foreign hand and most of it is from Western countries. France is guilty. The British are guilty. The Eastern Europeans are progressively becoming guilty and many of them. Have Africans done enough to realize the mistake and ignorance? No, we know. Oh, no, we know. Let me tell you, every African country now knows where the problem is. The only problem is that we don't want to resolve it. We know. If you talk to all these African leaders of the political class in private, they'll tell you we know. Bro, finally, I want you to kindly call upon young people. I mean, with your last remarks, what do you, what would you want them to do? I mean, there should be, you paint for them a picture of what you would want young people to do, to change and redeem the, um, the pride of Africa. I urge young people to engage, to participate. It is easy to uh, drown in the sea of constant lamentation and perennial fault finding. My plea to you, wherever you are, create an environment where you can apply yourself positively. If it is in your village, change your village. If it is in your city, change your city. If it is in your country, collaborate with others and make demands of the political leaders. Do it in such a manner that you will open their eyes. Do it in such a sustained manner that if they think you'll get tired, you'll never get tired. Did Do it with such dedication that they cannot ignore you. If you do it, you will be giving meaning to those immortal words of Mwalimu Julius Kambara Nyerere when he said in Kiswahili, Siri ni maendeleo, Siri ya maendeleo ni vijana wenye malezi bora, si hanjema na bongo kali. In other words, the secret of development is young people with good upbringing, young people with sharp brains who are focused to do the right thing. That is your duty. The results will follow the labor. Can I even add a word after Professor Pelo Old Mumba has given us closing remarks? Young people out there, you have heard him go do as he has asked. And I can assure you, the pride of Africa will one day be up there. Prof, can't thank you enough. I have, found, I have looked for anyone to thank you for uh, indeed sharing your wisdom with young people. I have failed. I will continue looking for the words and once I get to them, I will send you an SMS telling you that Prof, I have discovered a word to thank you on behalf of young people. May God bless one, bless all. It's been a mighty drive show with no man to me say an alternative digital on our YouTube channel, the uh, alternative Uganda <coughs> Facebook page, the alternative Uganda Facebook page. On Twitter, the same. Catch you some other time. You never know, we shall continue looking for other Pan-Africanists to share their wisdom with all of us. By God's grace, maybe one day we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, Malema and the others. May God bless one and bless all. Thank you, Prof, once again. Thank you very much. Yes. God bless you. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Hello, beautiful people. You're welcome to the Snap Talk with your girl Teddy Tenjo. Every Saturday, right from 6 to 7. It is your responsibility. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
Tawela vila nti tuli wano kuda alternative dig talk. Mukwano gwa gwali yetu. Pikichi wandia gade togireko. Is it about family? If you can take your time, look for a job, stabilize. Men will come. Men will always be there. You will get the men. Wanda gwa yagalu msaji jina gwa yagalu jamufuna. Mbaga ketu uke. Bina bitu ya suenga na ujaba. Na ingo olia situ detu. Ya kede kumacha baga nanti situ detu. Na inga mbutufu agami nti jia chari. Chari mbutufu. Is it outside family? Is it society? Oh, could it be relationships? Just be commenting atu piki unajia wandia gade togireko. Tujia kwa tujogela kwa nuku. The alternative dig talk ku share a nganzi the snap talk. You have got to get up pretty early to go do something. We are the alternative dig talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show, The Mighty Drive, informative and entertainment show, exclusive and live interviews. We present Mr. Bini, what they use in the Mulaba Pimaka Unga Kilo Bili. That's what a career. Nini Bavaria Kilo Tan. We are Nemo Kulisa, Iguanga Nebody Mundekera. Jagara Kueva is the alternative digi talk. It was the Kanoka Mighty Drive. Era Nava to Uliza, Bona, Abali Kumikutu, Jagara Basaba Mugenoma, so no Uliza. All given to you just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. Three minutes to 8 a.m. A very good morning and a warm welcome to the Mighty Drive Show. I welcome you uh, from that insightful discussion of Asaja uh, to a legendary a Pan Africanist. Uh, he is an orator. Asaja Yogera Ibigambo Ibiamani, PLO Lumumba, straight from Tanzania. Abadenafe Aoku in the first hour at the Mighty Drive with Norman Tumuhimbi. Such an insightful discussion. Banyumiza Kunsonga Ziba Denyinji Nyo Nyo Nyo. Boge de ensonga ziba de nyingi nyo e, tuwa de ne Kenyan jurist I beg your pardon omwami PL Olumumba huva wali e, mu Kenya uh, it was an intellectual debate ngao wado uli msaja ayogera ne bigambo byenga tamala gabibukira bukira bibala anamanya what he is going to talk about and how it is actually going to affect and chicha ategeza msaja kosanyo chibaita idiomatic expressions signs and similes Ebigambo bya yogero labya dalambu msajja ekintu kya badachi na a lot of experience and he talks from an informed a point of view so acha tukendo kolo runaku olwalero wano ku program ya mighty drive ndoza katusoke atuyite mu songezi wa desirambi kibwa omwami ono a pl all mumba straight from a kinya omsajjo ne byada yogera ko ayogedde ku bintu bya devinji no omwami no mantu muhimbi senga banyumya mu on the different things on how africa can really progress as a continent not only uh, uganda but africa and uh, na yogera ko ne east african community abadde ne bintu binji na tandikile ku talking points ebisinze okukwata mu babiro mu intellectual debate and ondoza tutandikile watandiki de ayogeda about the evolution of Tanzania jukira abada ayogera koyo e ali omukulembeze wa Tanzania omwami John Pombe magufuli amogede ko na aga mu msajja abade ne achievements nyinji na ndoza mu ne videos mu ali mu zirabe za ali trending anga ayogera ku mwami ono even before uh, he actually passed on he was a, a really a strong supporter of uh, omwami ono John Pombe magufuli so in the beginning uh, tumula binga soka na nyonyola uh, how what is what next is uh, what next what right what right um, stands next uh, in terms of Tanzania and uh, their leadership nagamba they have come uh, first of all we have experienced a new leader on 
on board. Uh, the, she is a lady uh, for your point of information, Samia Soluhu Hassan. Now, Gamba, she is going to be able uh, to continue the legacy of John Pombe Magufuli. Uh, excuse me. Nakakasa, you know, Omuchalo, no, uh, Tanzania, but they need to buy power transition over uh, time. He talks about uh, that this particular lady, uh, Samia Sulu, who will be able uh, to drive since she has the ideologies of Chama Chama Penduzi Party. Nagamba, Chama Chama Penduzi Party over CCM is one of the strongest party in Tanz uh, strongest parties in Tanzania, and we have seen this particular uh, party from way back in, uh, in history by the Julius Nyerere as they were aspiring for independence. They have come with Chama Jame Pinduzi. We've seen the Jakaya Kikwetes are still uh, in line of uh, the particular Chama Jame Penduzi party. So in this line, Nakaka Sambuno, Samia Suluhu, with the support of her party, where, which she represents as president right now, Nagamba, she will be able uh, to steer uh, the country forward. Now I'm supporting Anagamba. She is a, a strong and resilient woman who will be able to kutuale Gwangale Maso. She will be able to steer her country, Tanzania, uh, to uh, the best. So now you get a coach, Nagamba, this is something that we have been waiting for and it is already something great uh, that uh, Samia Suluhu has there. Uh, she is going to be able to lead uh, Tanzania uh, to where it is uh, going to be. Uh, going now you get a monsoon again that I'm having a woman no man and boozes up now comparing African countries now gamba watch African countries to Zinaba Kubanga is holding an intellectual debate but and say but you Africans to take a talk to talk to get a monsoon is to do my finger about to so in this room you're gonna be able every African country will you see Africa is peculiar every African country is peculiar and I take is a mobile will you see Africa is different and then get it about approaching a monsoon as a way and Joe low because because all of them have even unique problems. Yes, Nagamba Muno Murimu and Singa Ziga Tabizi Wun Gabizi Uya Baby Ebi Mo. Uh Wanga my Navy Zibu Ebi Fanagana. Nena Gamba Hey Namwe Bizwe Fanagana Walu Navy's we be African countries between uh Ebi pe peculiar Ebi and Jaulu. Nagamba when or should Africans start holding what he referred to as an intellectual debate on Mwami or no uh uh, on Pat uh, PL or Lumumba. So Nacho get up on Agamba. Africans should come back to a state where they had they can start having what he referred to as an intellectual uh, debate. To 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 Point. So now Africans have peculiar problems, we all have different problems, but then how best can we sit down as African countries and as Africans as individuals to come um, to a consensus and have an intellectual debate to see how we can move our country forward. So uh, this gentleman, PLO Lumumba, but I emphasizing on you this particular point, and he's saying, when do we reach, uh, when do we go back on the round table? So this is something that uh, we really need to take, um, uh, you know, take part in as African countries, as societies, even in Uganda, as communities. Our leaders, in fact, he also had to, to throw more light about that. So now you get an agamba. When do we start to talk to our leaders, have a roundtable discussion? Those are, I, I think, in terms of Uganda, we've had the inter-party organization, uh, organizational dialogue, IPOD. Uh, this, this has uh, brought a, a common table. It has sat our leaders of the different political uh, spectrums of the country. We see, we, they've decided to sit down on a roundtable and find solutions. But the only problem that, yes, they have had an intellectual debate in terms of their meetings and their processions, but then what are some of the implementations of the things they have, uh, you know, sat down and uh, agreed upon, or some things that have the challenges that they have been facing, particularly to uh, iPod, iPod, I mean, to be able to as uh, the different political organizations in this country. Where are they moving? How are they resolved? How are they actually implemented? Instead of just saying a division of some money because in a lot of iPod meetings, uh, you know, division of money and different political parties get different uh, a share of this particular, uh, uh, you know, this of what has happened from in the uh, iPod. Uh, you know, iPod is actually sponsored by the Dutch or the Netherlands. But apart from the money, what about the policies and the discussions that are being held? How then do we make them better? So, having intellectual debate, yes, 
naeka tinze nyonge deko my own point of view in particularly Uganda. We have had these uh, political debates and uh, we have the, had them uh, with the different leaders. We have had them in the iPod uh, procession. Sometimes we have them in parliament. Uh, sometimes we have them in caucuses. But then, how are they implemented? If uh, if DP has tabled something they feel that is not uh, helpful to them, then how are the how how are they how are the solutions implemented at the end of the day? So in having intellectual debates because I think having an intellectual debate alone does not actually you know uh, pull the, uh, our countries forward or our, our continents forward then I feel like after having these intellectual debates you know how then do we implement because that has been a problem in the African community for a while implementation is really really a problem then nada ko nayogera kwa leader African leaders when given a tough question Questions or when tough situations and tough questions approach them, Nacho Girako Nagamba, Anga President Museveni, Omami, Noman to Muhimbis and Asoka pointing out Nagamba. We have had President Museveni Wanonga. Webamu Gamba Ko, he says that one is an agent of uh, the Western <coughs> the Western world or the, the Europeans, and that is what he was asserting. So Nagamba, when do we stop taking the blame and saying that, you know what, this is a, um, uh, this, these guys are from the Western communities? Twalaba Ko and President Museveni, particularly in Gagamba. Uh, in an international address, Nagama Mbuno, uh, the, the uh, people like Chagulani and his uh, political interests are uh, they have influence from uh, what he referred to as uh, the Western world. So, no, no, Chadamu Buza Nagamba, then how, why, why is it that every time somebody shows their, uh, you know, uh, dishonesty or something that they feel, uh, controversy, something they feel that they don't, they, they're not actually, you know, it's something that is affecting them. Why do we say that they're agents of uh, the West? Then, in his reply, Nagamba Mbu, they assert that they are agents of the West. Uh, Nagamba then, these are tough questions that need to be addressed, Nagamba. Uh, not all, by the way, he was specific in this, Nagamba, not all uh, leaders are like that or will not turn and saying that this is a Western influence or ideology. Uh, Nagamba, those like the President Museveni uh, should come to a, a place where they can really sit down and say, yes, it is not mostly about, you know, uh, wh white influence. Sometimes look through yourself. Uh, do you have uh, th th those challenges before you say that this one is from the West? Though he, he was quick to, to also remind you, uh, many people who are watching him to know some people are agents of the Western uh, communities. You know, you know, you're accepting that there are those that are actually uh, agents of the Western communities. Uh, so, Nagamba, in that very room, Nagamba, African leaders feel, and you may lose an argument by uh, by the way you approach them. So now you get a kind of approach, Nagamba. Maybe uh, some people uh, co uh, conclude that this is particularly a Western influence by the way you address them, Nagamba. You can even lose an argument by the way you approach someone. Engeri jomu tu kiri de. Maybe the way you pass on the message, maybe you show that you have you have a different interest as an individual. So he was quick to also try to throw more light about this. Say that you know what, before you say that it's an, a Western influence, maybe the way you have approached the leaders, because I, I remember in one interview, this particular gentleman, not this particular one, I think uh, one Jitwakola came up again to the justice Kanye Hamba, they were on the same set. Now you get a Kunsonga Bueziti. So I think uh Jada Galachi Jaya Kura Gembu no African leaders they engage Jobo Zemu, Engage Agendo Kutualam come in a systematic way and maybe uh, you may be able to actually uh, prove your point and not not a jamungeri ebuka and uh, maybe accusing and things like that. So in, in that realm ga yogera kokwe and songa air western influence, nagamba even African leaders also by the way in one example ya yogera kumbu ye a manyo who gana president Museveni, someone who can actually hold an intellectual debate. I don't know Mugambe and Songa and I know and Songa and I could justify in the way I was a child because so now gamba the way you approach leaders might be sometimes is the problem and uh, we have seen this even here in Uganda. President Museveni Gagamba uh, the, the NU, NUP group uh, they're they they not respectful to, 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 like they, they have an, a western influence and get it get them so we can never know so much connecting because yeah President Museveni and Gagamba you know about nobody so arrogant to my need to they don't give others respect and they just uh, draw conclusions. Uh, so, Chia it comes back to the way the message is ushered. When you're talking about the weakness of an individual, it's better no quarter, no, no ushering your statement in a way that maybe does not actually uh, bash them or look down at them, but rather in a way that is a bit systematic and a bit. Uh, 
a bit better in terms of how somebody will receive your particular message so he was quick to also talk about this particular thing so let us go back and talk about how do our political players usher their disgrievances uh, we've seen different people do different things uh, while they're trying to utter uh, show their di 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 disgruntlement uh, when do we start to sit down and maybe say how do we usher the messages we speak out? Because this has been a very common problem with the opposition of Uganda, with the activists of Uganda. How do you actually approach? Do you think it's the right way to talk about things? There are people who just stand not near agenda ku street, not and go kuja chizinda alone ale kana to banjing about colour different things. Well on about juetika are people coming up with stories. Na juetika and songanga actually sina and two fu or rusi. No li what dabada in a mistake zakoze ye as an individual. Na gamba mo mani ah Na, na ulianga chiba chimu sikamu katona, habana ya chiti ya mkatona. So, habana ntaiga na kuchia addressing. Because nengeli jobo chia ashari nzemo. So, as uh, political players, as the opposition of Uganda, as the activism uh, activists who are, uh, you know, inculcating activism in Africa and in Uganda in particular, how are our messages are being uh, ushered out there to our leaders? Sometimes we have to accord them a bit of the respect they deserve as leaders. Okuanga beba kule mbeze bafe. The way you, um, because we've seen, uh, for example, one the national unity platform uh Jiranga, you see there's a lot of uh, uh, disrespect in terms of uh, the political players who have been there not only to the government itself kwanga to alabanga even there were a bit of uh, uh even their political players their po their fellow opposition uh, critics and opposition members by looking down at i think you, you saw uh, the, the the challenge we had between Chagulani and uh, uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besije, uh, the way uh, he was not uh, uh, Chagulani was not actually respecting uh, the income uh, the, the, the leading opposition uh, lead uh, lead of opposition uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besije, which uh, maybe uh, wrote about this, uh, divisions in uh, the, the political players of the country. So the way we usher out our message actually really matters if we are going to be comprehended and at the end of the day if we are going to be actually actually helped then nayo gela ko mwami no man namu boza ko kuchiba ise betray of african leaders uh, so nakamba ruachi ba african leaders bafe uh, beli ya munye nkwe why are they um, why, how, why have we seen a lot of treachery eh, mzungu watero kuchita in terms of uh, our leaders na example ya wade ya so vivid ya wade ya omuami ono o wa sa, Thomas Sankara omuami wa Bukina Faso Thomas Sankara took uh, power I think in 1983 yes but by 1987 uh, this particular young charismatic leader uh, who was looked at as an icon of Africa by then in the short time that he had uh, he had uh, you know, he had come into the political scene of the country. He was uh, actually uh, betrayed by his particular uh, friend, best friend who had turned into a brother, who was his deputy. Uh, by the way, not sure, but that is what they are of, of recent years, this particular president who hosted uh, Thomas Sankara from power. He's wanted by the international police uh, for these crimes of trying attempted murder and then murder of uh, uh, Thomas Sankara. So, watuna mna mubuzako, ya mubuzako, the betrayal of African leaders. So, na gamba, our uh, mommy in his response, uh, the philosopher and uh, the orator, P.L. Olumumba, the problem is with the people around uh, you. Be careful to identify the wrong elements uh, you party with. So, na chogela kona gamba, abantu wa singa wa tuki ingida zine entebe, tulumu tuwela vila abantu wa batu etolo de, and Nagama, we should be careful. African leaders should be careful in terms of the people who are around them because many of them want to, to, to take power. So Nagamba, we should be careful. Now, he even equate, um, asserted, um, asserted it to what happened in Burkina Faso. Now, how uh, the demise of Sankara was actually plotted by his particular uh, brother or friend because because they were raised in the same household. So, African leaders, 
I'm posing it there, uh, right there. In uh, other uh, analysis told about the clergy in Africa, Mami Norman, you get the into what are the clergy in Africa doing about what is happening in the politics of the countries of, of African continents, uh, of, sorry, of African countries. So whatever, and this this also comes back here at home. We we reached a point where many people were also looking at the clergy and they're like, maybe you have also uh, maybe disappointed Ugandans. Mubamaze mukumani. Abasumba, maybe Ariba Sovira, maybe Okubanga. Because you can change Chava, they profess this. Abajukira, there is that uh, before the election of 2021, we saw uh, some of uh, the, the uh, leaders uh, go to uh, President Museveni and really uh, pray for him to, so, to be able to win. And uh, we're not just talking about any leaders, these were some of the cream de la cream. I think those are some of the people that I can note out a prophet for Prophet Elvis Mboni. And when we talk about such leaders, they have a large following. Uh, so and Nagamba, uh, yeah, 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 in his response, uh, this particular gentleman, uh, P.L. or Lumumba, yeah, Gambia, uh, he was, he said, they are people themselves. They make mistakes, but can't lead people to the change they need. So first of all, he first accepted that uh, the clergy come from us. So quick to try and say maybe uh, they had this challenge and this challenge and this challenge and this challenge. Uh, so, get, so get to understanding that there are people like ourselves because uh, we have seen many uh, religious leaders fall into uh, different different types of uh, you know challenges to uh, all uh, um, um, uh, one of uh, the religious leaders in, in, uh, in adultery. Uh, so, uh, you know, he was being adulterous. What was he doing? He's a leader, a uh, religious person. Then, when you sit down and look at uh, him, he is a person. I know Musa Yenga Gwe, na ya ariye mere Yenga Gwe, na ye ba kanga Gwe, na ya sanyu kanga Gwe, na ya ni ganga Gwe. So the chino ne pl olu mumba chazena yogera kona gamba. They make mistakes, uh, so but but can't lead the people to the change uh, they need. Na gamba katu wabo no ono nyomu tuali perfect. Nga genda kola wichi mu he he used he used them uh, as uh, a simile that I liked. He said it's like looking for a snowball in hell. No, no, snowball in hell. Snowball is just money. Money for one, a bag of cola. One, ah, in Uganda, it's not too like a tradition. I'm coming to buy new. To move in, I'm going to in the western part of the country. No, I'm mountain range. I'm going to go there. There is snow, but some of us have not seen it snow. Uh, not here in Uganda, particularly. So, yeah, that one example that it's like looking for a snowball in hell mugena wali omulira omunji no nonya yo snow so that is how he was saying uh, trying to actually justify that these religious leaders are people and individuals uh, from the communities like us are ugandans like each and everybody like you and me who's watching me right now and uh, so he talked about this particular thing uh uh now you get a clergy in africa and then a clergy you know uh, we have seen some of the clergymen who have actually stood their grounds uh who have stood their grounds and have been able he, by the way when he was talking about the clergy he talked about people like uh, uh this ben chiwanuka i think he did was he ben Chiwan, uh, i've forgotten the name i know they are from i think it's uh, it's, it's ben chiwanuka i've forgotten the name actually Naturaga, one of our leaders here in africa in uganda particularly or uh, mommy uh, if i remember in 1970s you remember a one who disappeared and had has never uh janan loom yes uh janan loom mujuki the the name had slipped my mind yeah janan loom namu gira kuna gamba some people like those ones there, there were clergymen like them who stood their grounds because remember in 1970 73 yes uh this gentleman had been approached by uh, idi amin dadanga one of the some of the prestigious uh you know p positions in his government as minister he stood by the people and he was able to stand by his word. But the question remains, are there many um, clergymen who can stand the test of time, who can really prove their royalty, not only to the people, but to the world and to God himself? Uh, we have people like Janan Luum who did that, but there are not many, very, there are not very many leader, uh, uh, religious le leaders right now who are actually walking the talk. Uh, there is a song I was listening to of recent. Uh, 
mwami jerima yoyo musumba atida nyo kubima nye nyeyo ajukila parabo ya yesu kriste yunga ya kuata fish emigati ebili ne, ne ufish bubi na abu menyamu na abu, na abu multiplying ne bufuka abu ne, ne mbunji nyo la it was able to serve a very many five, over 5,000 people so this uh, this singer uh, brought it back in this sense and he said before Jesus used to serve 5,000 people but right now 5,000 people serve one our pastor which is really really true and I've seen this in the in the in, in Uganda here uh tulabanga atekati abali badde bayamba bali atibali be bayamba bono omuntu omusumbe yali badali sabali atekati abantu ayikumi tano be bali so omusumba others are the clergymen that we we have in Uganda that, that we need so these are some of the questions we ask ourselves as individuals, not to just actually uh, taint and uh, try to show that we are, we are living in a bad society. No, but they, well, there are some elements that really, really are not working and they are not good, good, they are not good worthy. We, we, we walk in, in line of Jesus. Uh, so, but uh, of recent Bambi we lost one one pastor uh, uh omwami uh, omwami wa ucc uh, omwami senfuma bishop senfuma yes yeah, steven senfuma a very very a very very vibrant uh, you know li, uh, pastor on omwami he has actually worked his uh, because this person I, I, I at least have followed him for a while i've not actually met pastor senfuma in person but i used to listen to his uh, some of his sermons and uh, in a man uh, fm abajimanyi 98.7 and he was talking about this the particular things uh, he, 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 he did not look at the earthly things but he actually looked at the inner person and I think he said that he got that as a manifestation from God because uh, okay I don't want to preach but just a manifestation where Gambi Rambuno Yes, we are your grandma. We are funa mukama your grandma in a mugamba or singing and a gamba ye are lying. Only Yamugambo limuenzi and in a gamba and I had to cut in the end. Limuenzi in Tianagamba, even the way you think, uh, the way you think, or mutu woman that go, wait a call no 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 more gano yagal or more. No, it no call no no yagal or more. Say, Mugongo had to have a gamba. Now you watch feeling a mutima. So, now uh, we are Jenjiri Jebaita, a young moon to warm wonder. So, uh, how do we still have uh, pastors who are looking at that? Oh, we still we are having materialistic people because these days you look you watch TV in Agamba. Is that the really uh, the foundation of, uh, of of Christianity or of you know being a religious leader? Those things we should look into them. We have to justify the fact that you know these are people like us, Nae Olusi. These people are really the stakeholders in societies clergymen and religious leaders you are stakeholders in the society so we need to sit back and about religious leaders we talk about these particular issues so that uh, in terms of the clergy where have they done enough in helping africans you know politically because they, they just say, they, they decide to ignore or some have even moved an extent of maybe uh, being with what people refer to as uh, the oppressor I don't really know where, I don't know the validity of these claims, but this is what people are actually asserting. So, uh, Norman Tumuhimbise was also intentional in asking about Bobby Wine and him being a radical. Uh, so, Nagamba, uh, Bobby Wine is being seen as a, a radicalist uh, in terms of uh, the way he does his things. Uh, what is his take as uh, P.L. Olumumba? Then P.L. Olumumba uh, really had uh, an, uh, uh, something that was really uh, a response that was really peculiar, a unique one. Nagamba, all patriotic citizens are radicals. Radicalism should be directed to a particular target. Let's not confuse demagogue and violence with radicalism. So any leader and any patriotic person, you need to be a radical, as radical as you can. Na gamba kati radicalism omanyi, ya wantu wa singa, radicalism wa tachimanyi, chibanga kubanga muntu, murulimi wa folwe chivobuka, ya wanda wa vovuka, the young people will understand this, okubana akabuli, you are radical, like you have that, that vigor. Na hii kati ya gamba, that should not be confused with violence and demagogue. Na gamba, Bobby Wine, he is right to be, 
radical in what he says. He's radical in his speech. I'm making sure I can say it's in you know, I just go say now, I just manage to know, you know, you know, you know, gamba, to make you kule 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 him being radical, I touch him full of violent person. Nagam, let's not confuse demagogue and violence with radicalism. So nagamba, for any leader, you need to be radi as radical as you can. Uh, uh, any patriotic citizen, you need to be radical and assert your views, assert what you feel you deserve as a community, as a population, because not many people, not various people actually, you know, assert their, 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 their feelings. So, you get a chikuruma making a sure or moon to a mani into this and this actually chiruma or no, uh, or no, 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 a tachagala or bachagal or manchu same one. That, that is what he called a radicalism. So, now Munyanaga and Bobwine is okay. He needs to be radical uh, as all patri patriotic citizens need to be. But di direct radicalism should be directed to a particular target. Nti and song a wet in a wet, you could do with a radical in what you're doing so in his speech nagamba wobo in a radicalism you're directing in one direction maybe if you're saying you want to change leadership direct your radicalism to that if you want to do this directly to that specific uh, you know target Nae, but he was okay saying that radicalism is good and we shouldn't confuse radicalism demagogue and violence uh, so uh, uh, in a dictionary out so we're gonna know so call about more the demagogue violence and radicalism biaukana Avitia Eda Chikazidi Avidi Mutane Zaka Ita Kusawa Bidi Ezo Kumacha Amanyanze Edgar Matthew Karuhango Kumanga Nkwere Zona Kuruwale Dombagami In the first hour uh, Tubade no mami PL Olu Mumba It was really really An opportunity And a gracious occasion For him to grace us Nagambo Manyi Let me come And also Have a drive in the On the mighty drive in, in This morning So that first hour So we are trying to dissect And dilute on What actually PL Olu Mumba said And Gatunyo Nyola Vichi Waje Yavudenga Yogi Nansonga Checha I'm instigating the but when I mean song as a does uh does it relate to us? Uh because this guy is this gentleman is an African philosopher. Um Saja you get a new atta you get a bit quarter kuba fidi cabe nini ngaba and to so to the muku dissecting on his uh his analysis of things ngatulaba does it actually coincide with us and what we think as Ugandans? Uh, so and then Norman also asked him about the education system in Africa. The other general is what has to specify in the story. Naga Mamundo Uganda. No, he said the African education system. Uh, then here in his response uh, about commenting about the education system in Africa, PLO Lumumba was uh, uh, intentional to say that this was inherited from the white man. To love the Arab, to love the Portuguese, to love the Frenchman, we need to inculcate skills that people can learn. Why do leaders run out? Of their country when they are sick. Nagamakati, education must be founded on, on, on skills through research and low self esteem should be avoided. So, Mubi Musonga, Omami on education system, Agambi, Baji designing a nyonga, a tunurida, a bacherupe. To so Mako in Yoko Bacheru Pengava Mani history, Musoboro Kujukida, and Gelgevariba Sova Cock, Bacheru Pengava Portuguese, who tried to summa Kuba French Revolution, and Richard Nagam, Baji suiting and Gati Baji suiting a Kuanga, a bring out the potential in an individual, but actually. We are just studying about uh, uh, we are studying about the different uh, what the white man wanted us to study. Nagama, we need to inculcate skills of which that that has been talked about many many times in different school of thoughts and political debates and you know educational debates. Ngaba yoke na kumi intuwe bitne wagamba na education system yafe etandi katia okuyi giri zomuto kuwe ane skill muchi intu na inga just ba kola mental retaining ye capacity inga jiba testing like when you look at the education system in Uganda and mostly African countries they teach about mental you know uh, mental uh, concept capitalizing of concepts into bakubu ziza che chari wa wano ochi demu ba ojukire so we look one go you can be a summer. Nayeti Bakuso messes a skill. Oh boy, you get in cutting all about Zongu Valley. Education in a main Oganam school is not the only education you can find. There are people who actually grow up in Gayakuze Agenda Kuba Mupila. So they are building a skill in this particular person. There are those who grow up doing art. Trollaba Picasso. Picasso growing up doing art up to when he died, he was an artist. So they they discovered the talent of Picasso when he was little. Messi was discovered when he was three years. Like people look at those skills and they actually develop those skills because at the end of the day it's the skills that will bring that will take you where you want to go yes science is the study of uh, living things and non-living things that is correct 
but then what is that skill set you have that will set you apart from the different people and Nemagama, you know what like I, I have one individual I know uh, my producer he's good at production that is his skill set he can edit he can do uh, he can uh, do different things he can do camera work he's, uh, he can shoot so already in a skill but again kusura anjara because what is that skill that we have so I think this is what PLO was also talking about Nagama we need to have a skill set oriented you know education system uh, Nagamba kati when we don't have a skill set or, or uh, you know oriented system tulabanga never leaders they work tebeka kasamaro alido gabwe when they get problems they are not sure they have to fly and go outside the country to get medical attention so this is what P, uh, PL Olumba was also talking about he said we need to inculcate skills uh, in the different people not just teaching them about the Portuguese the Arabs and the Frenchman etc uh, we need to inculcate skills that people can actually learn and gain from so ichiadacho girako then he also had to complement the mobile studio through changing digitalized content. Nacho Gira Konagamba is a very, very good innovation. And uh, I know no one was, tweet, was quick to also assert that it's the only, uh, you know, mobile studio that we have. Maybe it's the first mobile studio, let me say, the first mobile studio that we have in Africa. So it is a, con a concept that not many, not many people have actually been having or not many African, uh, Africans have adapted. Uh, so PLO Mumba also complimented on that. And... Uh, so he also uh, talked about East, East African community integration and uh, different policies. And he also brought this on a, in a broader dimension where he talked about African unity. Uh, then uh, in, his, uh, in his response, he was like, all countries are actually peculiar, but all of them have common interests. In this time, in this type, in 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 in, in, in the common interest, uh, we have a common market. Nagamba, we have trade unions, and we also have ultimately political interests. So, in terms uh, to enable to get as East African Africans at large. So Nagamba, what we are to divide is that we get with again a funam. But when we uh, come together and you know try to uh, merge and uh, uh, we have those things that will uh, will uh, unite us together. Now you get about the common markets. You see that that we sell our products from here and we sell them to Kenya and also Kenya sells some of their products here and then we also export to uh, Tanzania while Tanzania also exports to Kenya. So Nagamba also have a common interest. Nagamba but before we talk about the common currencies and the common national anthem and the common, you know, the common things, maybe uh, removing the borders, let us first look at the common interests we have. Nagamba, and ultimately, we shall still look at the political interests. Uh, political interests are in a futuristic way. Political interest. Maybe why doesn't East Africa actually get one leader? Why doesn't East Africa also get one currency? And Nagamba, and some things we shall not talk about them because. Let me use his words. Some are intergenerational. Not all things will be introduced in our time. Me and you, or maybe um, it's my kid or my child or my, my grandchild who will see this. Nagam, Sibuli Chimunti not to get a chiraba in our time. Nti, Onzo Kuberanga now, or Jakutu Kokfanga, East Africa, Tega, Soba Africa. Name my say, Otomania, Nagam, these are things we, we can stop building your, your block and you put your stone there. Then let us wait. The, the other generation, I take a stone, you never know what can come out in the future generation. So he was intentional about talking about this particular thing. Then, uh, Nagama, don't be a people who look for a problem in every solution. Nti, abafilika, tubade tu inechi, nti, tubade chukuli ya moku wanga, buli chizibu, tuchila wamu, buli solution jetufuna, tujila wamu echizibu. Nti, ateka tindese gana amageza, ateka waluo chine chibula mu. Nagama, don't be a people who look at uh, for a problem to every uh, solution, uh, solution. Then, he also talked about revolutionaries. Uh, revolutionaries, beba na bantu, baba ba mkwata mundu, abe ita haba nunuzi, haba kwa temundu, nebalu wani hile guangale, baba hali agala nyo, nebali fidi ya, nebali tira. That is how much some people love their countries. That is called patriotism. 
e, umutu waya gale guanga ina tukano kulitida haba antu haba muso na, na yo kira waya uh, noma ni amubuza why a revolutionary is never understood na mwa examples umu wabade muhammed uh, gaddafi uh, na, na mugamba uh, president museven himself na yo kira kwa wo haba uh, saja haba beba gamba haba um, uh, aliba amanyi ngense batia Eh, let, me, let me just use that word because when I was saying, what are revolutionaries? When I was saying, we are going to be a man. So now, why are they never misunderstood? Then, in his resp uh, response, Omwami on Yagambe, uh, Pan Africanism is misunderstood. Nagamba, uh, people are misunderstood. Now, now, example, great people have been misunderstood. Nagamba, Muhammad was misunderstood. Nagamba, Buddha was misunderstood. God was misunderstood. Jesus was misunderstood. Nagamba, so. You will always be misunderstood. Uh, imaging of critical masses. So, now you can't know, about our singer to be wrong, but we are misunderstanding and to come and boom. Now, you can't be misunderstanding. There is no example of Yesu, Abam Bagam, or Yarimo Fede. Then, Nagam Hamedi, I am misunderstanding. And Nagam Buddha, Neka Tonda, Yini, Yacho Gerekunaga, he was misunderstood. So, it is not easy uh, for, for these deep people to understand the different, you know, uh, the, the different leaders we have. Uh, so, Baba misunderstanding, which is normal. So, you wanted to show that this is actually. Uh, it has actually happened, and this is normal. Many people are actually what misunderstood. Then now you get a, We need to also have an emergency of critical masses. By the way, this thing is actually missing out. What in many many African communities, people we, we've, we've we've stopped thinking. What I'm going to give you an example. Omuntu wenda ya simba ngo mvulenga chima itajia na gue, itajia na gue, ila kone mtabani wa inzo kutagu, kutagu tula kwa, so wadi inzo na kutagu funa mutimba ya de. Na ye, ama nyima sayi wajia kubela yo mzukuru, omu mana omu mzukuru wali nyumirwa agundo omuti. Na gamba, why don't we think like that? Uh, this was just an example. So, we're saying, why don't we be in emergence of critical thinkers? I want to have a lot of to a master that is critical in thinking. Rwachi tetulo uoza. Netuka ama mbuno wensura kana akachupa. Ngambade nfuga nenka kasuka mkasa kaka plastic. Rwachi sifuna wantu wensua akari saiko linja nenzi ya mnenka koze sa. Critical thinking. Chia, chia ya da chogira kwenye. Then, nagamba, Africa should have a single currency, a single market. And he was intentional to say, ditch the borders and then you will develop. So, nalagia dala mgechine chintu kano muama Gaddafi. It was one of the ideologies he had. Yalaya gala ba, ba coming up with a common market borders to zijem common currency automanya uh, tuna developing. Because that is what is in the United States of, the, of America. It was a Yavao ku becoming the superpower. It was just different communities that came together and they lost uh, and they decided to just maybe forego their individual pleasures for a communal uh, you know, interest. And they have gained from this. We have seen uh, United States gaining different mm, yeah, very well uh, in terms of developing. California alone is the fifth uh, greatest economy in the world, California alone as a state. And so, maybe we get a common currency. No money, so we can go to Uganda, Paka, Morocco. Why is it? Why can't we do that? Uh, so, these are things he was actually uh, talking about. Then, we talk about anglophone narratives and feuds. Nagamba, decolonize your mind. Uh, colonial relics used by colonizers and their agents. Nagamba, we are francophone, we are anglophone countries. Nagamba, ditch those things they are used by colonialists. Right now, it's just a matter of uniting as an African uh, people. Then, Yayoge Deko, in Songazaba, then no Nyinji, Ngangendo, Kuzima, Lidiza, Yayoge Deko about where African uh, where Africans actually ready to gain independence uh, chino no man yachimbuziza na gamba uh, in fact ya gambe no man ya using the chigambo regain ya gambe where Africans ready for independence then ono na gamba we already had our independence we we just regained it na gamba uh, the whites were using superior ammunition uh, by dividing us Everybody deserves independence. Nagamba, um, Nagamba, when you look at the post-colonial problems that we have been having in terms of wars, civil wars in the different, different, you know, African parts of Africa, we've, we've had a, a, a ravaging in right now in Ethiopia. We have that in the Central Republic, uh, Central African Republic. So now you get a community, Nagamba, but this is not new. The whites have had these challenges as well. Uh, for example, now you get the First World War, the Second World War, now you get the American War of Independence, now the Coupe des Arts in Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Nazo, it is not new. And so now let us not think that maybe uh, we are demons by doing this. It is not 
nyo. Then nga maliliza omwami ono nomani ya yese ka, ka jaksta position kabade kalunji nyo. Where he talked about a dad and a, and a, and a child. And child abada aga nyo vuge motoka ya tata we. Then tata we nga gamba you're not yet ready to drive. Na yengo omwana alimila kumbu ya ya kolachi ya gala kufuga. Na gamba E, 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 na waga mambu, e, e, moto ka tata asoro jimu wa mbusu muna gama kare hiyo. Jivuge na ita manya, na, umano no, abata nafuna ready, tali ready, tanafuna experience. And then na gamba, is this the same as us in the independence time? Uh, so, yada ya galachi jayai amulage mbuno, amulage the, the, the severity of uh, what he was actually uh, asking about. So, yeah, I like the way, I like people who use such uh, idiomatic expressions and similes because image in literature, because understanding better, he comprehends better. And no man is one person who uses, uh, it's called uh, stories, or you use folk tales. No, no, why omuntu, it is his role, yo close, I'm not jamu the wisdom. Yes, we are yogeranga, by the way. Aba man, yes, we are in parables. Gayo gire bi intu then uh, Omwami Adam Aliza Yogede Kupiel Olumumba also talked about leadership should be about service delivery. Uh, not just leadership like that. Nagamba leaders should create change in people's physical and social lives. Service delivery. Obo affecting a yenga yomuntu. Omuchu siza physically. Obo mwada marali yonga wegali. That means agenda kuwela mula mu socially. Ochite gira katichia date geza in terms of leadership should be about service uh, de delivery. Then, nemamu uh, buza ko na hebu why not offer yourself as a leader. Everybody thinks uh, you are you or you can be a good leader. Yeah, you get a call, you have been a philosopher. Why don't you offer yourself as a leader? Yena Gamba, in his response, everybody thinks that everybody should be a leader. Nagamba, most moral leaders are the greatest there, but they have never been in any political office. Now you get a Buddha, now you get a Gandhi, people like that, they led their countries, but they have never actually, you know, been in any political office. So Nagamba, you don't need to be in a, in a political office to be a leader. So he was intentional in saying that. Uh, then the Mambuza Kuba Vubuka, as he was coming to the end of the show, as I'm also coming to the end of the show, Nagamba, youth is not a permanent stage. Prepare for your future. Create an environment for success. If you are sweeping those streets, street, street, um, sweep them like nobody ever did. Be the best at anything you do. Ndi, omuvubuka ya magezige ya muwade. Ndi, gwecho nacho okura. Chikoze se motima umu, umotima gumu. Ndi, wawosa zeo kubeda anga gwe mtu wa gendo kubanga uyera. Yera, uh, be the best, uh, you know, cleaner there was. Wawosa zeo kubeda the pilot, be the best pilot. If you're saying you're a journalist, be the best journalist you can be. So, chiyawade, chiyawade ya yogera ko mbu. Beda, uh, chuche njini choya galo kubeda. Then nga mariza na gamba, um, secret of development is having young people who are focused and the results will be vigilant and like Julius Nyerere said. Nti, beda, uh, the secret of developing is having young people who are focused. Beda focused at what you want and the results will be visible. Badja kuzira wa atenga china ayogirambu. Julius Nyerere, it is one of his sayings. Manye musajja kosa nyom what they call uh, sayings and uh, parables and idiomatic expressions. Uh, so, yacho gede kona gamba, the secret of developing enongabada maliza, as he was part doing his parting shots, he said the secret to development is having young people who are focused and the results that will be vigilant, like Julius Kambarage Nyerere said. Ladies and gentlemen, at 42 minutes uh, past the 8 a.m., to China, no, a prologue over a summary of uh, what this particular gentleman was saying. Um, uh, this gentleman, uh, P.L. Olumumba from Kenya. A Kenyan jurist, an orator, a, a political analyst, and very, very intelligent uh, man. So, be the best at what you can do, and uh, be focused, and the results will be uh, vigilant or visible. So, it was really, really an insightful discussion with uh, Norman Tumuhim. So, thank you so much, uh, P.L. Olumumba, for always, you know, uh, giving us a bit of some time and an opportunity to talk to you and have you talk about the dynamics and a global context on what Africans need to better their lives. I want to go to the world, by the way, for now, no, 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 no,
and uh, get their way of thinking and you never know what you can uh, learn from them you, you know in communication not all of us will understand what this gentleman has said or will comprehend or will implement but there will be one person at least who will take away something so i hope you have taken away something about that level you've learned something from pl or lumumba it's not every day that you'll be able to get people like these uh, to talk to them and get their insight on views on things on what what is happening in the community so allow me rush through uh, the news that has been going around i'm only emerging by the way and i think tomorrow remember tomorrow is going to be an in-house thursday so i will be here with uh, lillian and we'll be talking about the trending stories that trended throughout the month of june to get to get the different stories because we're talking in a cousin with Zilia Sato, by the way, about the Tibachmani, Omezi Guende, because the Batero Category and Nekat in a cousin of Aluna Cola, Catsimani, Gedi, Jibaginda Kuanga, Babasa Sura Munanga, a South Nomezi Guende Quetu Gedida, to Genda Kuanga Tingra Mezi Guamunana. So, in chat tomorrow in the in house Thursday with Lilian Lue, the Princess of Mumbeja, to Jacquato Geda Cousin and Songa, Nesbades trending and Omezi of Woko, not to Nimemu, to Labe, Church Gena Maso, Nakamba, so came by Semu Mauri, Gab. Ba dega tambura jo taba dem dachika zine kumineta na zise mbayo. Covid X has been uh, finally approved by the National Drug Authority. Abamanyi Covid X nyo dega la libare se okuanga li supplementinga kuba 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 covid 19 or trying to cover treating it's like a supplementary treatment covid x na covid x no no ab kore do no umana we wakavi mamu koze na ye enaku zino bamu haikinze e chita tegerika kwa te tumanyi the actual price pharmacies ziza anjawuri wala wabamu tunde mitu wale bidi wale wabamu tunde mitu wale etano ate I was talking to the manufacturer and Ate Yagamba, it is supposed to be sold at 10,000 shillings. Uh, so, uh, COVID X, Ate, Utoge and COVID X, Ate Batandis, Okuanga, Bamu, Bamu Jueteka. Aba fio manyaba na yugana bote baguwayo. They are they are bringing up things that are fake. Walaba nala denda ba wano some of uh, uh, names going around and pictures going around. Gate COVID X wanja ulu batani so duplicating. So, aba kuziba COVID X, maybe you can get a seal. Or something like that, or how you, how the original product is unique from the other. Because that I'm totally desperate. But you're going to change the channel because COVID X. I don't know if you saw that. But the ne Minister of Health in Gambia, people are now disseminating a fake medicine. I'm a daganga to do the vaccine. I'm not allowed vaccines. I'm not allowed to go to the market. So these things, if we take it in 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 time in a time like this. Sometimes we know to look, before we look at ourselves to to know the banange community. To the much time, much time we pandemic at all, we're duplicating a dagara, chiba techikola bulungi amagezi. Then na maro aliro geni ni banage gawa de gonge zebi sale, nebi nsimbi, ena kuzinobula mubugulwa bugulwa. Simani how you people will be doctors. Who are actually over hiking these prices? You'll be a prison of your own conscience. Go to Lamu no laba now. I'm as much into a food day. Rua kuata ina millioni sato ezechita. Na lawe walo gwa gambi wa millioni tano kuwe chita anda leta millioni tano. Just for one day. Some things banangi. These are just supposed to be hospitals. Let us be uh, people who are patriotic as uh, P.L. Olumumba was saying. Let us love our country uh, and not see people going down the drain. That means for someone who cannot afford five, five million shillings, obo genze kufa banangi. Hey, that is because I was seeing even a friend of mine ga posting zeku status here. Nze na mugambi da amazima people are going to die if uh, we keep on doing this. If you can hike a hospital bed for five million just because you, you want to, to get monetary gains. At the end of the day, an accumulation of, of, of money Money. money is just paper. As uh, President, uh, it's not President, he's a, a pastor. He was a, a person from the Bible. Was he a pastor? A king Solomon. He was a king, but he was an, the most intelligent person on earth. You trying to get money and looking for accumulating wealth, Chayogera. He's trying to chase the wind. You will get the money, I'll get the money, at the end of the day, look at your money like this. I, that, you don't have purpose in that. So I, I want to, about Marwal, you this is a, is a, by the way, it's a serious question to you. You, you need to revise the way you do your things. Uh, at, at the end of the day, we are all humans. And don't let someone succumb to COVID-19 just because they cannot actually, uh, you know, be able to pay uh, for a, a bed. Then, we are in a really, really tough time. And uh, that's why you're seeing a lot of uh, uh, depression going around on social media. You can see by people how they are, they are posting and, and the things they are sharing. So, COVID-19, doctors and pediatricians and health workers, in just a space of one week, uh, last week, over three people, uh, three medical workers, 
dying or succumbing to COVID-19. But like COVID-19 is real. Tuala bini, um, the founder of uh, Uganda Funeral Service, Babi Mchalo in a food day. Uh, so COVID-19 is actually ravaging many, many Ugandans. Let us be keen to wear, uh, to wear our masks. Uh, let us be keen to an intentional to uh, sanitizing and uh, uh, keeping a social distance and that very much more than we need to be uh, as protective as we can. Then, Omami uh, Charles Peter Maiga on a particular Wabuganda, ye aganye in Kole, ya Milo and Tenya Nagama, Milo and Tenya see later the problems of the land language because when I present Museven in the presidential address, you get a car about this Nagama. I don't even know where this Milo land and crown land <laughs> went from when I am sergeant of President Museven. You don't, I, I think I also know where my land and crown land came from, and we know its evolution. And sometimes uh, some kingdoms also deserve their independence to that extent. President Seven Nti Milo and Tenya, see it is evil. See it is which they say Mataka, it is which they are Mataka. We want to have a Gakola Chaba Gawamba. People are trying to, uh, you know, take away people's land. So that is the problem. Then, to Alabia Elnakure Gurunga CDF, Mohozi, um, your hand is the office, Eri General Wilson in Badi. General Wilson in Badi is the new chief commander of the defense forces. Jukira Kati CDF Mohozi, the Mita CDF, the CDF, General Mohozi. Is now the Minister of uh, Internal Affairs, the State Minister for Internal Affairs. Then he's also a member of Parliament uh, representing the military of Amaje. So we're talking about CDF here. Your hand is the officer, General Wilson Mbadi. General Wilson Mbadi, by the way, no, Abade Msaja Abada going in the ranks of UPDF. And uh, when you look at this move, but why you had a school of thoughts? Why have they appointed uh, General Wilson Mbadi? Why have they, they appointed? Uh, you know any other person? Uh, then I was thinking Maybe it's because um, he is from Kasese, the rural region, and maybe he was trying. President Museven was trying to repay the people of Kasese for voting him back into power in 2021. Because we're the whole of Kasese was is yellow as we are speaking. But if this you never be Kasese. So Omana Abueka, General Wilson Imbadi, the CDF people are saying that this was maybe uh, a way of. Uh, uh, balancing his political interests, of which so this is politics, my dear. So yesterday, General CDF, uh, uh, General Mohozi, he handed off uh, the new CDF, uh, General Wilson Mbadi. Then Jacob Zuma Banang, he has been uh, sentenced to prison for 15 months uh, over contempt of court. On Omsaja Bamuita Omwaka, Ngachari President Bamuita J. Atulemka, Corruption, you know, corruption unit carry in South Africa. You get him about his corruption charges. They are like a co president. So, Bamu Kutenga of the Kuntebe, Bamu Sindhi say for 15 months out again. I could be a moon commio, Mumbuze Koga, may you in South Africa and Buzen Koga and Tosua Kujuana. But Saja Babida Emia Cabinum San Van Nelson Mandela, Gabida Emia Zucuminator, no, Saja Jacob Zuma. So, I'm not advocating for corruption, by the way. I'm just saying Jacob Zuma is, has been sentenced for 15 months in prison over contempt of court. Then, vaccines are not going to be able to get the vaccines. They are not get uh, but what about you? What about you? But I'm back in my coach. I could do a little bit. Tuala bienga vaccine is igwa obugwe. Baba cha gema bantu vaccine is awele. Kuna of which that is also uh, something that is true because ba ba kaleta uh, uh, is you know dozing tuwa lukumi na msavu nechi tuundu France zi atuwa. Zizu kaze tuina. Nezi lize mbuza zi tuwa budgeting na mu lockdown ni ogula vaccines. A million you come in Omuna, na is always going to facilitate in government to million you mean that's those are coma wa because that money to many is vaccines as soon as vaccines that what it costs there have been donations to all of the World Health Organization get what they to all of an omega gawo moya to where is a was it was it Alibaba yes Alibaba ya to where is a and I pack a cutty is it what it costs a is a phase it why it does because we designated uh because all only vaccines you know by the Zalimbika 
yafe vaccine ya, ya dola tano buli vaccine. Na yeti nga uloa matuwa waliwogira ku vaccine za sente zili less than that. People are talking about one dola a vaccine. United States vaccine yabu ya one dola. Na ya Uganda paka ya dola tano. Atene zizi tano zi wai tese za 18 million. Tezi nalawi kapaka wano. What is the procurement process? What is happening there? So, I think it's high time the Minister of Finance pa furumeyo ba yogira kubine wintu over the Minister of Health. Echogira kuna yu Minister of Health ya vuda yu na yogira kuzili sente ze mwa collecting abana Uganda obumbi abiri mmwenda ne gamba zicha ali intact doctor atune we yagambye but the doctor atina was really really not happy in this scenario na gamba bantu muli mubogera ko binji nyo health system mujogera ko binji nyo na gamba banange ebi mu bichamu na gamba billions za mwa abiri mmwenda ze mwa collecting azicha ali intact bagenda zikozisa okuzimba two referral hospitals eh okuzimba two referral hospitals mu, mu other parts of Uganda then no kufuna vaccines ezimu so katulinde tulabe ya uh, doctor tuni chi yatu subize da chikano zibula yo musanvu banange uh, design kazi wede kwane producer ndaba ngamba manyi obudde bo buwede yo then uh, uh, Uganda yongera yongera okufuna amabanja amala wetogera nga IMF etonge de banja dia 1 billion dollars mu za Uganda ze obutabalika wa trillions zili satu na chitundu 3.5 trillion uh, loan okubanga tumi mitigating uh, the effects of COVID-19. This is where we are COVID-19 on Wali Mukutura Vejinga. So, we are going to go to Then, we are going to go to Banangi. We are going to go to the travel permits. And now, we are going to go to the Mugano business. We are going to go to the Castovera and the nga bachikuwa so e police yegamba power azezo bazi bajeko baziwa abantu abalala so omwami enanga we adayo gera then ne government katine cho kuba we mitwalo 10 10 chira kachitandi so kubanga chifuse feasible mm -hmm. abata ndiko kuchachancha abajuwa amazi ga, ga kaunga mugayuwe <laughs> na ina la byengirije ba dividing za zino sente nga balaga ntino abagenda kuwa wa mitwale ebili kitundu ja za bijanja ale mitale naja akaunga e 13 za sabuni akadomola kabuto then mitwale ebili ejisigala wao ja kubera ngo bya waka e mpola mpola bande government enonge babali ya bulunji so mchala na banja zizende za lava suvida za lava suvida na hiyo ya ba, ba, ba de specific ni bagamba bantu viva gendo kuwa zine simbi mulimu wa bantu wa bali ya mele ya lero bana bantu ba wansi uwe ayogede ni bagamba ate uobase uobe e namba yoteli mumanyago e, liku national edit siye siye namba yemu e, e, te, amanya sige gamu sendezo jazi jam post bank e, mituwalo jokumi so na ayogela kuwa sindi si baby gali bantu wa bakula wa bakula mbutale Abani abu abantu bisinga biogedo kwa bantu ba wansi nyinyo nyi, nyi. abad abatafuna mguu na ika chenye buse ba genda kuba deficiating abati ya bana kadi kanto wa lentindi gua doza kamali dize ne mandatory introduction of digital trackers uh, in motor vehicles and bikes boda boda ne motor kabagena tani kuzi teka mu tracka minister mupia wa security wa wada gamba nti bagenda zite kama trackers msovolo kubanga baba trackinga mbona we muri atemu abagenda kuesa suya trackers amwe zibagenda kubati rambanangi kanko mau amauli yego kachari manji nyo 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 mr Chiw, minister chiwanda ya wadeyo ofisi bana amauli ya manji nyo 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 kanko mau eda chika zili nyai zibula yo kuwele sawa bili ya zoku macha amanya ze edgar matthew karuhanga nsanyu so kubanga muchali nange pake sawa zino comments za mwezo sizi genze ko banayo na ko lwale no munansonywa tujja kuzisoma encha nja kuzisoma i will be intentional by the way to read the comments you had about uh, appeal or mumba i'll read them tomorrow with Lillian right here on the mighty drive show i will want to end with a quote from a philosopher i know he's called alex uh, to uh, to emerile ho kan so ke mba we ka quote ke he's a philosopher you don't want to miss out on such a uh, knowledge people like uh, people like these ones are, are never uh, people. So at Omeroko Alex, a philosopher, Yagambi, as we end, before you spend so many hours, can we add that addressing a yabachala? So ladies who are listening to me, be keen, Mudachiken, Sembayo. Before you spend so many hours at the table, at a makeup table, and zero hours at a study table, let me remind you that what makes you most attractive or unattractive is not how you look, but how you think. The depth of your knowledge and understanding your world view everything else including the looks and the curves come after this quality if you cannot sustain a meaningful conversation you cannot sustain a meaningful connection either one is the building block of the other a philosopher to marry you alex ke kukaba gambia wachala make over ya kutebo ya make up ogenda di kutebo ya vitamu mcha pasaji ya tebo fanyoko kumfana na yo uh, hips zo ina na bichi mbafa ku ubuo ongo buo engeli jola wa mwensi na gamba ubato sobo la kubango o, o, o sustaining a meaningful uh, you know discussion 
you cannot also sustain a meaningful connection. Ti wakati soo wala kukugira mbozi ya magezi, tu soo wala ila kuwela mu relationship na muntu. You cannot sustain a, a meaningful connection. Or your philosopher tell me, yo, Alex, nja kuwa mba somira most of his uh, uh, wisdom, uh, nga, nga mweno show, nga wetumaliza, nga kuwa yo, an insight from the philosopher himself. My name is Edgar Matthew Karuhanga. Allow me, I leave you today, and thank you so much for watching the uh, the Mighty Drive, log on to our social media platforms at the Alternative Uganda on Facebook and on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, comment or syndicate and subscribe and uh, share uh, these messages as much as you can. My name is Edgar. We had PL Olumumba and uh, Norman Tumuhimbi in the first hour. I was in the second hour to just give you more insights on uh, what is happening in the country. My name is Edgar Matthew Karanga. God bless you and see you soon. <laughs>